Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is the week we celebrate Christmas. And you know what we're celebrating during Christmas? We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, we, we know this season is a season of remembering everything that Jesus represents, everything he has done for us, and who we are in him. Now, the reason times are set or seasons are set is that we remember these things. And, and if you don't remember these things, then the season is worthless to you. You know, God set up things for the children of um, Israel to do. You know, for example, he told them, write this word in Deuteronomy chapter 6. You see him instructing them. He said, put it on your forehead, put it on your wrist, put it on your doorpost, put his word everywhere. Why? Not because the word, when you write it over your doorpost, it will stop the enemy from coming to your house. No, so that you will remember when you're going out. Praise God. You see, oh, yeah, I remember. Praise God. You know, it's the same reason. Jesus told us to break bread. See, the same reason. Now, why do we break bread? You know, some people think, oh, when we eat the, the bread and the wine, you know, what we call communion, when we eat the bread and the wine, some people think it's, you eat, you're, you know, it, when you take that bread and, and then the pastor blesses it, it automatically changes to the flesh of Jesus and his blood. No, no doesn't, doesn't change to the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. It is still bread and it is still wine, praise God. But you see, Jesus commanded that we do it in remembrance. Now, you see, sometimes we, we have to be careful when, with our walk with God. And that is how traditions are formed. Now, there's nothing wrong with traditions. You only have to be sure that the good, you're following the good traditions. Now, when a tradition is formed, now what's the purpose of the tradition? It is to remember the roots of that tradition. So Jesus is actually telling us to form a tradition of breaking of bread. See? So when we do that, what are we doing? We remember. We remember him. It says, do this always in remembrance of me. Now, what does it mean, remembrance of me? See, people don't get it. They just think, oh, we remember Jesus today. Oh, Jesus came. Oh, we remember Jesus today. <laughs> oh, not just that kind of remembrance. You remember the reason he came. He said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it in abundance. That's why when you are in trouble, Maybe, maybe you have a, 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 a sickness in your body, a terminal disease in your body. Maybe you have it right now. And you don't know what to do. You've prayed, you've done everything you need to do. Hey, try breaking of bread. Now, why, why, why do you say breaking of bread? I'll tell you why. Because <clears throat> when you take that bread and cup, here's where the power is. Right? And you don't, you, don't need, you, don't, you must not miss it. The power is not in the bread and the wine. The power is in the instruction behind it. Now, the doctors have told you you have terminal disease. Right, okay, fine. Don't quarrel with the doctor. You go back home and you say, Lord, I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> you take that wine and that cup and set it before you. And take the scripture where Jesus commanded them that do this as, do this in remembrance of me. And you look at that scripture say, Lord Jesus, what, what should I remember you for? Because I'm going to take this cup and this wine as you commanded and gave to your disciples. And I'm your disciple. And you said you were giving them your body and your blood, which you eventually did when you died on that cross. And I am included. And what's the reason you died again? That I may live. Lord Jesus, I am taking this wine and this cup for this singular purpose. 
that you came to give me life. <clears throat> now, what are you doing? You are setting a point to release your feet. And now you're bringing his words to remembrance. And you're saying to yourself, he says, no, Jesus said something. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, as I live by the Father, even him will live by me. What does that mean? I live because the Father gives me instructions. See? So he says, anyone who eats the, my flesh and drink my blood. Now, what does it mean to eat his flesh and drink my blood? In real essence, he's talking about his word. And that's what he's talking about. But then he, he set those symbols. Because I can carry his word in my heart. And I don't discuss that with anybody. But you see, the thing about our walk with God is to maintain a testimony, not just for us, before others. You understand what I'm talking about? So that is why he, he said faith without works is dead. Now, what are the works he was referring to? This, what I'm telling you now, is one of the works. What is it? Taking the bread and the wine. So someone looks at him and says, why are you doing that? Oh, Jesus. See, now you are expressing your faith that he cannot see by the works that you're doing. So he said, you know what? I'm going to take this bread and this wine and watch I'm going to be healed so how does that work I'll tell you you see Jesus said I will live by him now I trust him but for some reason this sickness has found itself, itself in my body but now I'm going to express my faith as I take this based on his command and when I do that now what are you doing? You are expressing your faith at a point. And then you're leaving the rest for him to prove that he is true or he's a liar. That's exactly. So you, you, you know, you can be thinking, oh Lord Jesus, I pray you heal me. I pray you heal me. But sometimes you draw the line. You draw the line. You say, Lord, you know what? If you cannot heal me, if it is not in your ability to heal me, then let it be settled right now. So I draw this line. And I'm going to do this. And after this, I'm done. I leave it to you. You want to heal me? You heal me. If you don't want to heal me, then that is up to you to refer to me that you don't love me enough to heal me. Oh, you've not, you don't know what faith is. You, you, you don't know what it is to hold God to his word. And then you do that. And he said, Lord Jesus, you came that I may have life. The doctors have said I'm going to die. But that's not what I say. I say what you say, that you have, you have come, that I may have life and have it in abundance. You see that life that you came to give to me? That's the life that I know. And I receive it even right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you finish that you take that cup. Look, take your Bible. Look through all those scriptures Jesus spoke about him giving you life. And he said, Lord, let it be settled right here that I believe. And because I believe, I am taking this bread. I am taking this wine. Let me tell you this. There are things you do physically. See, some of these things we do physically, not because God does not know what is in our heart, but most times we do it because of the angels. And that's why God instructed us to do it. That's why he told them to keep the traditions. Why? Because of the angels. The angels don't know your heart. They don't. They function based on instruction, commands, and what they see. I'm telling you the truth. So when God commands an angel to, he just comes and he does what. But you see, there are certain things. Mom, take it. I have not even told you what, what, what I'm even talking about, you know, today and this week. You know, the, the word of God is just staring in my heart. So, I mean, the moment we start, praise God. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I'm sharing with you this week on how to end the year. Uh, how to end the year so the things i'm going to be sharing i'm going to be touching different areas but but that's all we're talking about how to end the year and and line yourself with god's purpose for your life 
So you, you do that in remembrance of him. The moment you take that, even the devil that is behind that sickness knows that you have done an action that expresses your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other faith, there is no other religion in this world that emphasizes breaking of bread. Even the Jewish religion doesn't break bread. It was Jesus himself that instituted breaking of bread. Now the Jews, they have their different feasts that God commanded them. But you see, breaking of bread, the first place you see wine and bread being brought was brought by Melchizedek. And then the second time you see wine and bread is Jesus, who was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You understand what I'm saying? So now that's to tell you how important that act or that tradition is. So when you carry out that tradition, when an angel sees you with a wine and, 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 and bread, and you're doing it in the name of Jesus, the angel take knowledge of you. You are not normal among the rest. There's something special. You are expressing your faith in that lineage. So don't believe anyone who tells you, oh, don't break it, don't break it. Don't believe anyone who tells you those things. They don't know what they are talking about. Now get me right. Don't start taking it like one uh, uh, medicine. <laughs> it's not a medicine. It's a tradition. And you must learn to teach your family, teach your children these things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. When you do this, listen, you know, you remember the, the story of Esther and, and Haman when, when he had um, plotted on how to eliminate the Jews. And then things began to fall for him. And then he ran back home and he met his wife and his friends. Now, these were the people who plotted, who gave him the idea of what to do to exterminate the Jews. Now, when, when he ran back and told them that, man, things are falling apart for me, guess what his wife said? The wife said, look, hey, guy, if Mordecai is a seed of the Jew, you can never defeat him. He will surely fall because of him. Why? She said, because he is a seed of the Jews. Now, what made her to know that? Experience. Experience have taught her that you don't fight a Jew and overcome him. Why? Because of their connection with God. Because there is a, oh, I don't, you see, God gave them an instruction to keep. And as long as they keep that instruction, God stands with them. He's on their side. He's the same thing with you. If you follow the commands that Jesus has given, there is nothing that is going to shake you and be successful at it. The wind may blow. Yes, you may feel the wind, but you see, the impact of the wind will not be negative on you. That is how it works. Praise God. Yes. So you set your heart. There are, there are certain things God has commanded us to do. There are certain things Jesus has commanded us to do. And when we do it, we are expressing our faith and breaking of bread amongst everything he commanded to do and keep as a tradition. Breaking of bread is the most important one. You know why? Because it, de it deals with the core of the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to be talking to you about that, you know, this week. And like I said, we're going to be touching different things. But get this, this year. Is going to end well for you. You know why? Because I'm going to be sharing with you things that you should put in place. And if you listen, understand, and let the Holy Spirit guide you, testimonies and testimonies will be your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Atuba George. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.